Hi everyone, I'm Robbie Bieber and welcome back to another Collodion Chat. This one is going to be hopefully pretty quick. Um, I've just got a new kind of 3D printed accessory. I wanted to show you all how it works, how to put it together. And yeah, so this one's gonna be probably a little bit of a niche, uh, niche offering, right? So this is specifically a modification for this, um, this main trophy plate cutter. I'm not sure if, if main trophy actually makes this aluminum shear. I suspect it's probably a generic one that they resell. But currently you can buy this particular shear from main trophy. It's got a 12 inch wide cutting area. These things are really expensive. Uh, the last I checked, they're like $440 brand new for main trophy. So I don't think most of us doing wet plate are gonna have one of these. I got lucky and I got a really good deal on a used one, so I picked it up. I will say it's a very nice piece of equipment. Um, you know, not cheap. Probably would not have bought this with my own money at full price, but I got a good deal on it used. I'm very happy with it. However, <coughs> there's one thing that I'm not happy with, and that is the fence slash stop system that it comes with. So this gizmo comes with a built-in kind of stop for repeated cuts, right? So the idea is, you know, I want to make a bunch of cuts the same length or width. I would set this little dealy here that adjusts with a dial, and then I could just make cut after cut after cut that same distance along the back. This is probably great if you own a trophy shop and you're making a bunch of those kind of really narrow little plates, um, you know, little name plates that you're going to put at the bottom of the trophy maybe like what, 20, 30 millimeters tall. And so in that case, you know, most of your material is gonna be on the bed here for support, and then you just got a little bit going over the edge. For wet plate, this is not great um, because we're gonna be making potentially much bigger cuts. And so, you know, if I'm taking, say, this 12 by 24 sheet of trophy aluminum and breaking it down into eight by tens, you know, if you, like me, enjoy using Chamonix wet plate holders, then, you're gonna be left with a tiny little sliver at the end of your sequence of cuts. And I do not wanna be cutting a plate, you know, with most of the plate kind of hanging out here over the edge and just a tiny little bit supported on the, uh, on the bed of the cutter. That's not, A, it's, it's not good for accuracy and clean cuts, and B, it's not safe. Um, this thing is not a power, this is not a power tool, but it is a very powerful tool. Uh, this shear will very easily cut through flesh. Uh, it's got a ton of mechanical advantage when you pull that, ha that handle down. I actually know someone who, unrelated to wet plate, used to operate one of these things and uh, took the tip of her thumb off and took quite some time to heal. So yeah, you wanna be careful with these, you wanna be safe. And the other thing is this stop just doesn't go out very far, right? This does not go far enough to cut even the 10 inch dimension of an eight by 10 plate. So I decided to 3D print a replacement because um, what we really want to do is we want to have our, our keeper piece on the plate well supported and just have the rest of the material hanging off the end. So it comes with this kind of little somewhat flimsy aluminum scale, right? Mine got damaged in shipping. It's not a big deal. Um, but this is really hard to like set a stop block on or anything like that. So I just went ahead and I 3D printed a replacement. So you only need three parts, right? You've got two options for your fence, um, a long and a short one. This long one is meant to give us essentially the same cutting distance, maybe a little bit less, but very close to the same cutting distance as the stock, uh, stock fence here. And this is just long enough that you can print it on a 250 millimeter to a side print bed as long as you place it diagonally. Now, it, did, it is gonna hang off the edge of the cutter, which you might not like, and you also might not have that big of a print bed. So I also made a shortened version. This obviously can't make as big of a cut, but it will fit entirely on the bed of the cutter, and you can print this on like a, I think 150 millimeters on the side print bed, for this diagonal, it should print. So this will work for those of you with smaller printers or who just don't like this hanging out over the edge. And then this has a stop block system that it comes with. So you're going to also need one of these little kind of dovetail key shaped stoppers. 
And then we've got this stop block, which also prints, everything will print in the orientation that it comes in the STL files. And then our little stopper here, you're just gonna wanna make sure that you put a heat set insert M3 in the larger side hole of this stopper, okay? So let's go ahead and install this thing. Um, I'm going to grab a little screwdriver, pull off these machine screws. And I'll just take this flimsy little aluminum fence off. There we go. Now I'm going to take our plastic fence. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure when you print this that if there's any elephant's foot or any brim remnant left on kind of this bottom contact surface, um, you're just gonna to wanna to make sure that you either, you know, file sand or cut that off because you wanna have a really flat, you know, as straight as possible surface for your plate to index against right here. So let's just go ahead and throw these screws back in. And these should fit in here through the slots in the fence. Not the easiest to install, I have to admit. I guess it would be better if I put them into the fence first. And then I can just set them into the holes on the cutter bed. Give them a couple turns with a slotted screwdriver. There we go. And now once those are in secure, you see it's got a little bit of wiggle room. So I'm gonna get this not quite tight. Just tighten it up and then back it off like an eighth of a turn so that it's free to move back and forth. And now I'm just gonna make sure this comes back before the cutter. I'm gonna drop that cutter down. I'm gonna take a good square, set it up against the blade, and then make sure that this fence is held tight to the square while I tighten it down. And now we should have a fence that is nice and square to the blade. Bingo. Okay, so that's all there is to installation. Um, you don't really need to worry about the distance from the cutter. Just give it, you know, maybe an eighth of an inch or three or four millimeters of space. Um, originally, I had tried to design in some scales, right, in like metric and imperial. The problem with that is that I quickly realized over this long of a print distance, um, depending on the material you printed in, those scales may or may not be accurate. I used ASA for these and they had shrunk enough that I was losing, you know, maybe a millimeter or so over the distance. So if you want to scale on here, my recommendation would be to just buy, you know, a stick on scale and then put that on and calibrate it yourself. But I don't think there's much of a need for a scale because I just like to calibrate this from an existing from an existing plate. So now all we gotta do is we take our little, little dovetail key, we slide it in to the slot here. We're gonna take our stop block and we're gonna fit it in over top of that. And I've got a little thumb screw here. This is M3 by about 12 millimeters. Um, I think 14 would probably work better. This is a little on the short side, but it does work. I just screw it into that uh, threaded insert on the dovetail key, and now this can slide back and forth. When I tighten it down, it'll be nice and snug. Um, this is designed to be a very tight fit, so if that dovetail key doesn't slide for you when you print it, um, you're just gonna wanna either sand or file down these dovetail ways a little bit, or you can sand or, sand or file the dovetail key a little bit just to make it slide better. So now this is installed, the way I like to do this is to just base my new plate size on an existing plate. So here's an example of my eight by 10 plates. 
They're not actually eight by 10 inches. They're, I think, around a 16th of an inch off on each side because Chamonix plate holders are slightly undersized. And so we can see I should be able to get three eight inch cuts off of this plate. <coughs> so all I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take my existing plate butt it up against the cutter with this in the down position. Then I'm just gonna take my stop block, set it right up against that plate. Then, yep, let me get that. There we go, and we'll connect that, tighten it down. And now, I've got my eight inch dimension set. I can just take my sheet of aluminum here, slide it into here. butt it up against the stop block, make a cut, and this thing cuts just beautifully. You know, you don't get those kind of pulled down edges the way you do off of a guillotine paper cutter. Cut number two, pull it up against the stop block, line it up against the fence, cut. And now cut number three is where we really see kind of the need for this type of system because this is gonna leave just a tiny bit of waste sticking out the back. And so you can imagine if I was using that stop that came off at the end here, um, I would be trying to balance this like this, right? And make a cut, which would just not be good for the plate. Also wouldn't be good for my fingers if I was trying to hold it steady here. So this way, we got the plate kind of mostly on the cutter body, nice and well supported. While we just take that tiny little bit off the end. And the fact that this is a very consistent size from end to end tells us we got our fence good and square. So that takes care of our eight inch dimensions. Now we need to cut these the long way to 10 inches. So we loosen up our stop again, drop the cutter, move our dovetail key and our stop block over, tighten it down at this 10 inch position. Now we just take our plates, get them up against the stop block and the fence, cut. Cut. And finally, cut. Three eight by 10 plates cut really quick. Probably could have done that in a minute or two if I wasn't, you know, demonstrating for the camera. And we can see these plates are all exactly the same size as our original plate. Of course, if you don't have an existing plate to go by, you can always pull a measuring tape from the tip of the, uh, the cutter block here. Um, or you can always add scales to this if you wanna be able to kind of adjust it just on the fly. And so now I will loosen up my stop block. Just get it finger tight. There we go. Um, so yeah, this is a really kind of obnoxiously expensive aluminum shear. I'm not saying you gotta run out and buy, drop 400 plus dollars on this cutter, but if you already have one and you have a 3D printer, uh, hopefully this fence system can make it work a little bit better for you. So yeah, that's, uh, that's today's episode. Good luck cutting your plates out there and hope everyone has a great time.